Hi, I'm Beth from Speak IT Solutions. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Philips SpeechLive user interface on the web browser for typists. Let's get started. When you first log into SpeechLive on your web browser, this is how it will look. One of the first things you will want to do is, if you have a foot pedal, is to get that connected using the PDC wizard. There is a video showing you how to do this on our channel and in our knowledge base. Just going to plug in my foot pedal and you can see that it's now connected as shown by the green dot here. I can update the functionality on my foot pedal using these drop downs and then save that configuration and that will work within SpeechLive. This is the SpeechLive user interface. You can see all the dictations that are currently waiting or in progress and also any finished dictations. And you get various bits of information with any of the dictations that come through. You can see the status, so that's the current job status, and there's various ones including transcription pending, correction pending, in progress, so that's a recording in progress, as shown by the little microphone icon. Uh, and there is also a transcription pending icon as well on any transcriptions that are currently being transcribed by a typist. This is useful if you have multiple typists in a workflow so you can see which jobs are currently being worked on and you don't double up on any work. Another bit of information is the priority of the job that you're working on. This can be helpful if you are given high priority or critical priority work. That shows here in the queue as well. You can see the length of the dictation, any title given to it, and then importantly the author and who it was last modified by. That's helpful if you're not sure who was working on a job that's currently in progress, you can actually see who it was last modified by, who it was assigned to, last modified and any due dates, etc., and the file name. Now these columns are changeable, you can add more, you can hide them, you can also change the order of them using this settings icon in the top left. If you click that, it shows you any settings and any columns that are currently visible in the dictation list and any that are hidden. To move them into visible or take them out of visible, you can just drag and drop and your queue view will update in real time. If you want to reorder them as well, you can also reorder them that way. You can also filter by some of these columns by clicking this icon that is like an upside down pyramid. So you can see in the status, I can select various statuses on the jobs and it will show me anything that matches those statuses and you can have multiple selected at once. You can also select all or clear all. These pill buttons at the top also act as filters. So if I click pending and it goes darker, that means that the filter is active and it's only showing me pending dictations. You can unclick it to remove the filter and you can have multiples selected at once. And if you want to remove the filters, you can also click this reset button, which resets all filters and all sorting. On the left hand side, we have a sidebar that shows you a bit more about the work that is currently in your queue. If you are on a pro or enterprise account and you are part of multiple teams or have multiple workflow relationships, they show in this sidebar. And again, they're clickable filters. So I can click any jobs that were assigned to the marketing team from Beth. And they show me here. Or if I wanted to see any other work from other teams, I can click that. And again, it will show me work from Beth that is sent to the Beth default team. If I want to reset the filters, just click that reset button again. In this sidebar, you also see the number of jobs that are currently waiting within that workflow relationship and also the total time of the jobs waiting in that workflow relationship queue. To start transcribing a dictation, Click on the job that you want to work on and it will bring up on the right hand side more information about that recording 
and that dictation that has been sent to you, including the priority, any due dates, any other information that has been added to the dictation. If you scroll down, you can also see any attachments that have been added like photos, videos, or files. To play the dictation, you can either click the play button with your mouse, or if you have a foot pedal set up, you can use the foot pedal to start the dictation. I'm using a foot pedal here to play, rewind, and if I wanted to mark it as finished, I've also set up a button to do that too. If you like to transcribe into another document editor like Microsoft Word, and you want to have that showing on your screen, and for example, if you only have one screen, there is a pop-out mini player, which you can find using this icon in the top right, which is two squares stacked on top of the other with a play button on it. If you click that, it will open the mini player. To start the playback, you need to click the play button first, and then your foot pedal will become active. So now you can control the playback while typing into another word processor, or if you are typing up an email, it will also work in email clients too. To then close the mini play, you can just click the close button or back to tab and it will reappear back in here. Once your transcription file is finished, you can either drag it from a file browser or click upload a file to upload it and you'll be able to add the file that you need by clicking open there. And then to finish the job, go down to the bottom right hand corner where it says send to, and you want to send it to finished. And that will finish the job. Any finished jobs will show in your workflow queue unless you have any active filters. So if you're only seeing any pending jobs, it won't show. So if you wanted to see it, you can either click the finish pill button here to also show finished jobs, or you can reset your filtering. There are automatic archive settings set up on your account. So after a certain length of time, depending on what's been set up, any finished jobs will automatically go into the archive. You can also archive any work that's been finished manually by clicking the tick box on the left hand side and clicking the archive button here. If you then need to find any work that's in the archive to play it back or move it out of archive and back into pending because it's not actually finished, you can find it in the archive here. As you can see, there's some finished work in here. And then to go back to your dictation queue, click that drop down and go back to my dictations. You can also set up immediate auto archiving in your personal settings. In the top right hand corner, you click the drop down arrow and go to personal settings. In workflow, if you switch on the archive immediately button, any future jobs that are marked as finished will then automatically archive. You can then switch that off too. You can also find other settings here, including language and more information about your profile. The workflow queue now automatically updates in real time rather than checking every so often. When a new job is submitted or a status is changed, it will now update in real time. I'm just going to send a dictation in to the queue. That's now sent and you can see it's automatically popped up in here. So that's now ready to be transcribed. Again, I can see the priority has been set. If I click it to open it, I can see other information as well as before. So this has a department added to it. And it's also got a due date. If the author hasn't given it a job title, and that's something that is very helpful, for example, if it's a client name or a file number, you can click the edit button and then you can make changes to it here. Just remember to click the Save Changes button here. 
There are other things you can do as well. So if you need to download anything from it, including any attachments or the audio file, you can do that using the three button icons here. You can also manually change the status as well. So if there's nothing to be done and you can just finish the job, you can also finish it here. And that is an overview of the Philips SpeechLive user interface on the web browser for typists. If you have any questions about using Philips SpeechLive, then call us on 0121 456 7800. If you need technical support, then you can raise a ticket by emailing support at speakit.co.uk.